Hi guys, happy Wednesday. Um, I am back with another video which um, I decided that today I'm gonna film a video about my 30 weeks pregnancy because I'm 30 weeks pregnant today and uh, just to give you a little bit of an update on that and also I wanted to, as I said yesterday, I wanted to film a video where I am gonna speak a little bit about how I um, ended up um, uh, as a single mom. I'm gonna try to make it short because it's a long story. It goes back with about uh, three years, <laughs> uh, but um, I'm gonna make it short and just to kind of get to the point. However, I just want to say that today has been an absolutely blessed, beautiful day. It's been 32 degrees, 32 degrees in England. It's crazy. Um, I've been here a long time, but I don't remember when was the last time I actually experience such temperatures and it was a blessing but it was also very difficult because I couldn't really stay for too long outside. Um, right now I'm in the garden and I have an amazing tree which I'm super grateful for as you can see and it's got beautiful shade and um, I couldn't be more blessed with you know this because it's just so good to be able to stay in the shade not having to stay in the sun otherwise I wouldn't be able to enjoy the sun. Um, but today's been a good day. Um, belly's growing, as you can see, and I think it's getting bigger by day. Um, I think I'm gonna have a big baby, to be honest. Um, I, apparently now, at 30 weeks, from what I was reading on Baby Center, they said that um, the, the baby's growth is gonna slow down, but they're still gonna be putting weight or add fat or something like that. So hopefully, you know, it'll be like a steady pace now. Um, because I feel like I've put on uh, quite a lot of weight in a short amount of time and it was very like, you know, just like dumped on me. <laughs> um, so anyway, but I'm so grateful because I am healthy and I've been super energetic, uh, much more than I was in my very first semester, even in the second semester. But now I'm like, I'm so grateful. Um, and so today... Um, basically what i did i went to town i cycled so about 20 minutes uh, each way to town i met a friend and we went to a park which is absolutely beautiful it's called christchurch here in oxford and it was absolutely amazing it was just nice to sit down especially during this crazy pandemic you know um lockdown thing <laughs> um to sit down with a friend in the park in the shade and we chatted and it was just so relaxing so i'm really grateful and then i cycled back and on the way back i was dying i mean i was in sweats honestly i shed so much sweat um like literally i was in a lake of sweat for only 20 minutes of cycle which normally doesn't really happen um, but, um, yeah, when I got back home and <laughs> in a nice cool home, I was like, oh, thank Jesus. Uh, but yeah, the sun now is like literally shining on my back and I can feel it. Um, but I'll just kind of leave it. <laughs> so I'll try to focus on this. Sorry, I'm a little bit all over the place today. Um, but what I wanted to say is that, yeah, so far for 30 weeks, I feel quite good, although I just feel quite heavy. I reached 67 kilos from 50, so my initial weight before the pregnancy, like before actually being pregnant, I was about 54 or 55 kilos and I was super lean and I had a six pack and I, honestly it was very different and now I am 67 kilos. It is a big, big job and a big big shock so you can imagine how much like i had to take in but you know it is what it is and um, i am after all cooking a little human inside so i think um it's only fair to say that's a small price to pay for that um but um today um you know after i did cycling and everything i was quite feeling quite blessed to be back home in my nice cool uh home uh, I got a really nice special delivery from one of my friends today in Italy and she sent me three beautiful pregnancy dresses. Absolutely amazing. Um, I was so blessed, honestly, um, which I will take some photos or something, a video another day. Um, 
apart from that, like pregnancy wise is going well. I'm kind of stuck a little bit on ideas, although I've been very active in finding recipes on Pinterest and things, or even just creating things um, about recipes, what, what to eat, because I, I kind of have appetite, but it's not like crazy. And the bigger the baby gets, the less my appetite gets, which is fine. But um, I'm also becoming pickier on things, so it's now becoming a little bit challenging to think, oh, what can I eat that it's healthy, that has enough protein, that doesn't have too much fat, and then the sugar cravings are coming in now and then, a little bit more than usual, and so I try to supplement that, you know, to kill that crave with fruits and just a spoon of like Nutella one now and again, um, just a little spoon teaspoon not a spoon um, but mostly fruit and um, I also feel like drinking more pop and stuff lately and so I try not to um, unless I give myself maybe a Diet Coke or something once in a while but I also I try to drink uh, water with uh, zero sugar or no added sugar squash in it not too much just a drop for the flavor for the taste uh, so basically these would be my approaches on stuff on on you know um, when I get this sugar cravings and things um, and I've been very good at making protein uh, you know desserts and pancakes and baking various stuff because you can do a lot with it but lately I haven't like in the past week and so I haven't so I need to get back on it um, I'm hoping um, by the end of this week to you know start cooking more and start baking more like healthy things that is going to get me through the pregnancy uh, you know without me piling it more than I have already um, pregnancy wise so like um, the only thing that it's a bit disturbing um, now at 30 weeks pregnant and I don't know if I'm the only one but I have this pain, stitch-like pain, right on the top of my womb here, um, abdomen. And I don't know if it's Braxton Hicks or because sometimes it gets hard. But I can also feel that it's probably maybe the ba the way baby's positioned in like my ribs and something because I can feel him moving, kicking every time I touch that kind of hard part, which I think it's hard part. Um, but this stitch has been since yesterday, so maybe the position of the baby is quite like with a leg in my ribs or something, I don't know. But it's been very uncomfortable because I haven't, I didn't sleep very well last night. I was tossing and turning on each side and, you know, very difficult to find a good position to sleep. Uh, but I kind of embraced that too. And I'm grateful that I, I mean, I'm thankful to God that I am being paid while I'm furloughed um, but that I don't need to go to work because right now I probably struggle a little bit um, with the sleepless nights and adjusting and not having a good position to sleep in um, however apart from this pain stitch um, I also get like swollen hands when it's very hot although I have reduce the salt and I'm trying to reduce the salt intake and also to hydrate myself better and also I my um, ankles um, started getting swollen um, not like massively thank Jesus but uh, they I can see the difference you know because I never had swollen ankles in my life um, and now I can see and I can feel them slightly heavier but not exaggerated so I'm grateful I hope it stays like this the most like I hope it doesn't get worse um, and apart from that um, you know toilet trips yeah toilet trips are getting more and more now and in the daytime it's strange in the daytime I drink a lot of water and actually I'm gonna have a sip of water right now <laughs> in the daytime I drink a lot of water because I try to drink before 8 p.m. so that at 8 p.m. I just sip literally sip uh, or don't drink because I don't want to go to the toilet throughout the night uh, but I still do which is funny because in the daytime I go maybe one every hour every two hours sometimes like I can last you know I can go for longer but in the night 
I need to go at least three times a night, which is crazy because I'm like, how in the world? I haven't even been drinking water. <laughs> um, so yeah, it's strange, but um, apparently it is normal. Um, so thankfully I can go back to sleep not that easily it takes me about 30 sometimes it's even 30 minutes to go back to sleep and I try not to touch my phone or you know I just kind of lay there and I usually pray <laughs> I pray for like sleep and to be able to go to sleep and it does help because I fall asleep while I pray um, so it does that that works for me uh, but apart from that yeah it, I've been fairly okay with everything else i'll just show you that what i'm about to i'm about to have a workout shortly like an upper body workout um and also to have my dinner this is my dinner as you can see so it's like a potato uh it smells really nice i like it, it smells fresh and you can eat it hot or cold it's a potato salad and it's like three boiled three little boiled potatoes with two boiled eggs lots of spinach fresh tomatoes feta cheese and red onion lemon juice and olive oil and i mix them all together and oh my god it's delicious so because i was just thinking what can i eat i don't really fancy meat i'm not a big fan of meat you know i like veggie but i also want veggie that is kind of good and that has like good nutrition that has nutrients in it not just empty calories that make me feel up but also protein and that sort of stuff so this one has pretty much everything in it so it's got like veggie the veggie side like spinach and fresh tomatoes you can add cucumbers peppers whatever you like but i kind of like to stick with those ones that mix and it's got potatoes which is good carbs and not too much so three little ones and two eggs protein good fats so i'm gonna have that for dinner but first i'm gonna have a little upper body workout like back and stuff because i'm getting pretty flabby and i just need to do it for my mental health um anyway yeah and also uh, i will share with you shortly once i just kind of go briefly through my story of <laughs> my life um not my life of my single uh, motherhood um i will share a book with you which i think is great and today i'm gonna really I'm, I, I'm, I plan to go through it a little bit more than I would normally do um, but to get to the point basically um, how I ended up being a single mom well I um, you know uh, before this before being pregnant I was well I was in a relationship with somebody else and it wasn't the right thing for me we broke up I said I'm sorry it doesn't work blah blah, blah. And then all of a sudden um, the father of the child basically he's one of my ex partners so ex ex I know it sounds pretty bad I'm sorry but he is one of my ex ex so, um, and he I loved him very much we were together for three years but it was a very toxic relationship he was uh, I was very codependent and he had post-traumatic stress disorder but I in all fairness and I am almost certain he was diagnosed uh, incorrectly uh, with it because I personally think he's um, either BPD or NPD so borderline or narcissistic personality disorder one of these I kind of incline more towards narcissistic personality disorder to be honest um, because of the way he's been like acting especially now um, and the lack of empathy and everything but that's another thing that I'm gonna speak about another time so anyway we were together for three years um, the relationship was very toxic we broke up three times during that year and the last time we broke up I literally said I'm not gonna go with it go you know follow your life I'll follow mine and that's it now just later to find out that he moved three weeks after moved in with his um, client because he's a personal trainer so three weeks after we broke up he moved in with this girl and all over Facebook blah 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 uh, you know couple stuff then um, you know like uh, six months after that it was really traumatizing for me because he was abusing me harassing me at the gym and stuff but I never really hated him because I knew his history he has a horrible traumatic uh, childhood and stuff so he's absolutely disordered emotionally and mentally but 
from that point, you know, I continued with my life, he continued with his life, stuff. Now, last year, in September, he broke up with this girl, um, and somehow he reached out to me, you know, telling me how he made a mistake, he shouldn't have, he jumped too fast, and blah, 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 and all these things, and, and I said to him, you know, be single, try to go on, live your life, uh, meet other people and stuff, move alone, that sort of stuff. And so I stupidly decided um, that I'm going to be his friend, you know. And from one thing to another, because I wasn't completely healed um, emotionally, because I loved him very, very much, and I think I was still codependent, especially because I just broke up with my ex-boyfriend, and then he came back into the picture. Um, that kind of made it, um, you know, I was vulnerable. So I said, oh, we're going to be friends. But then that friendship turned into you know friends with benefits and anyway it took a couple of months but you know I never saw myself again with him in that relationship because I was very hurt but as I said you know I was still somehow codependent on him and then well what happened is that in November something happened like from one thing to another whatever and then this baby somehow was created, something that never happened in my three years with him. Um, when I found out that I am pregnant, and that was two days before Christmas, um, we were not in a relationship, we are just friends with benefits. And I knew, like, he likes his independence, I liked mine, I did not want him in, back in my life as a boyfriend because I was really hurt from the, you know, last time we'd been through this. And I said, never again. And I said to him over the phone when I found out, I am, you know, so ready to be a single mom and everything. So I'm not going to put any pressure on you. But if you want to get involved and, cope, you know, if you want to get involved in your child's life, then fine. But if you don't, then it's um, absolutely fine. It's your decision. Um, I will not put any sort of pressure on you. I am more than happy because it's my decision to keep the baby. So I'm happy to do it alone. Uh, but I, it's not in my, you know... First of all, I knew it's not in my values to kill a life and to kill my own baby. I would regret it for the rest of my life. I would have a stain on my head for the rest of my life. And I would probably think all the time, like, did I, you know, miss my very last chance of being a mother? Because I am, after all, 35 years old. And so, anyway, so I said to him that. Then he said to me, oh, no, no, you know, um, it's really scary and blah, 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 but I want to be all in it. 100% or nothing he said to me so then from that moment he started like giving me illusions of like uh, you know that we can make it work somehow and this and that but then all of a sudden after some you know not even a few weeks down the road he started having all these anxiety attacks and panic attack not panic anxiety attacks and he was blaming me for causing this because I was pregnant, but I wasn't living with him. I wasn't really doing anything to him. You know what I mean? I was just going on with my life and just kind of keeping him in the loop with the pregnancy. And of course, we were spending some weekends together, you know, trying to, we were talking, making plans, you know, how we're going to manage all these and stuff. And he was very in it uh, for a very short period of time. But um, that being said, you know, a um, couple of months down the road, so like in February, he, he kept saying to me many times when I had like a doctor appointment or something and I would go alone anyway, I did never made him come with me because I, we live separate anyway, like, you know, 30 minutes distance from each other driving or something like that. Um, I said to him, I'm going to go to all these by myself you don't need to join me or something you know I mean you are a single man and I am a single person so we've got the right to you don't have any responsibility towards this because I'm sure if I would have given him the option should I keep the baby or not he would have probably said well I don't think it's uh, wise to keep him uh, keep the baby so anyway but every time we had like a I had a doctor appointment and he offered to come he was getting himself in an anxious state and stress out and like putting the blame on me you know and I never said anything to him I wasn't forcing him to come to these things nothing at all 
but he wanted a reaction from me and I wasn't giving him this reaction so um, all in all in the end um, basically uh, how everything ended basically is that at the very first can so a week before almost two weeks before a week before he started saying to me that oh you know I need time alone please give me some space this and that and I'm like fine <laughs> you don't need to ask this for me I'm, I don't live with you we don't live together you don't owe me anything I don't owe you anything so whatever um, and then he stopped talking to me he didn't say anything for a week I had no idea what was happening I was already like almost three months pregnant and you can imagine I was going through a lot of nausea and mood swings and hormones and uh, insecurities and a lot of like i was thinking about the future what am i gonna do and it was horrible and he just was not there basically i did not feel any support from him at all even as a co-parent you know and so um in the end when the scan time kind of came i said to him i don't know if you still want to come to the scan with me or not if you don't want to come let me know because i'll take one of my friends who's more than happy to come with me because she wants to see how it goes but if you want to come with me let me know so i don't take somebody else because it's your right in the first place but if i don't want to beg you i don't want to whatever you know and so he said no i'll come he came with me to the um to the scan but before that he instigated so much anxiety on me like even the night before he was like oh um i think we should leave very early like two hours earlier and my house from the hospital was like 15 minute drive or less like at that hour and he came almost one hour earlier we were there 40 minutes earlier at the hospital but he was like putting so much pressure on me and i wasn't i just said look it's easier let's meet there at the hospital not a problem much easier you just come straight there don't stress i don't stress that's fine oh no 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 let's just go early i'll come and pick you up and blah blah, blah. he was complicating over complicated everything just like he always did and the anxiety was like over the roof for him and he was trying to project that to me too so i can feel the same um, and to a certain extent he did manage to get me to that you know point where i just I, I almost, not almost, I wanted to go by myself, honestly. I thought it would be so much easier for me just to go by myself um, without a person who literally, on purpose, is putting all this pressure on me and it's making me stress for nothing. Um, so that scan, um, that day at the scan, he started acting fairly normal, calm down and everything. He, was getting slightly excited and he was going like oh you know you sometimes you are just so lovely and I love you so much and things and he was just like a roller coaster he was never ever stable emotionally mentally it was never like you know for a long period of time to say I love you and I love you for <laughs> that period of time no he was changing you know and I didn't have to do anything it was just a complete mess and he was making me a mess too um, and then at the scan, he basically just decided to start crying, <laughs> you know, he was very emotional. I understand him because it was the very first time we actually saw the baby and I heard the heart and that was a moment when I actually cried. But when he saw the baby, he was crying, like literally was emotional and stuff. Um, and then he was just holding my hand and stuff. And I was like, well, I mean, okay, for the first time I thought, he really cares and he wants this baby and maybe you know he's just a mess but maybe maybe in my head i was just like maybe maybe still hoping and never learned my lesson up until that point after the scan was great because we went to have breakfast together and it was just lovely we were looking at the pictures from the scan and it, it was just nice you know overall then after that day we were supposed to meet um over the weekend to spend some time together because he he said you know he proposed that not me he said would you like to come and we can spend the weekend together and everything and i'm like yeah that sounds really good um let's do that yeah why not just so that i don't hear anything from him for like two days almost i had no idea what's happening and i didn't want to ask are we still gonna meet are you whatever what's the plan for the weekend so i know what to do just so that i wake up in the morning saturday morning 7 a.m I wake up and I 
I see a WhatsApp message uh, in which he tells me, um, I'm sorry, this doesn't feel right for me. I, don't, I can't do this. It just doesn't feel right. I hope you understand. So that was the very last message I got from him. Uh, when I read the message, I just didn't reply. I ignored it completely. I just, I was very sad and I knew because I've been there before with him and I just didn't expect that I'm going to be slapped in the face once again, especially with his baby in my belly. If it was just for me, I didn't really, you know, I would, I would care less. But then just thinking that you have a baby and, you know, you just you just kind of desert me just like that with no explanation and so I knew there's something behind happening after that complete silence yeah complete for like I don't know three two three weeks because after two three weeks I found out <laughs> from another person that he's been cheating on me when we were together for three years he's been cheating on me for one year and a half with his client with another client um, so he was with me at the same time as he was with this uh, Spanish girl for a year and a half and I only just found out um, which it affected me but not much necessarily emotionally because I did not have feelings for him as I used to have before but it made me realize that I do not want him in my life or in my baby's life um, I just don't I need to remove him I need to cut him off completely and so I emailed him, um, not like, I wasn't necessarily rude, but I emailed him and I said to him um, everything that I was thinking in that moment. I just said, I cannot believe what monster you, have, you are and how can you just hurt somebody that gave everything. And especially now when you have a baby on the way, you're a baby. You know, um, I don't care about a relationship. I don't want to be in a relationship with you, but at least be honest, be true, be transparent. Um, but I said I don't want you near me or my baby. I want you to stay away and I don't want you to 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 have anything to do with me um, So, you know, I'll be doing this alone and you know, I'm grateful that I get to experience um, To be a mom and I'm actually grateful that it's your baby because at least we had a history together or, You know something and it's not just a stranger uh, that I met overnight um, but and I just thank you that you've given me this baby but that's it there's nothing that I have for you not even respect or anything so in that moment um, that was um, sometime in March but I haven't heard from him since February anyway um, end of February so since then I haven't spoken to him or anything instead I looked on Facebook and three weeks after the silence and everything like um, maybe around March, mid-March, um, his Facebook, uh, I don't really look on his Facebook because he blocked me and stuff, but he has a business account and stuff, and he posted a um, video with a woman um, who is now, and he was talking about couple workout, blah, blah, so he's in a new relationship, but <coughs> only like three weeks after he cut all you know, the contact, and I cut all the contacts, so I don't know. <laughs> um, so yeah I decided that this is it I don't need that I don't want that sort of person in my life ever I don't want to be hurt but it's not even about me but I don't want somebody um, to be called a dad for my child who is not constant because this is how he is he comes in and he goes out disappears and then out of the blue I have no idea where he is why did he do that? What did I do? What did I do wrong? You know, and I keep questioning myself. So I've decided I'm not going to put myself through this anymore. I'm just going to continue with my life, live my life, and I'll pray that God provides everything. I don't need him at all. He's an extra stress on my head. I just need to be healthy and I need to be um, at peace and I need to you know I, I don't need to be like stressed and traumatized and things like that um, I just want to be you know able to take care of my baby um, yeah and so I've just decided that this is it I do not want to put any sort of effort or you know uh, thoughts into it um, and since that day that that's it I just cut all the contact and um, I did email him letting him know that he has a baby boy when I found out the sex of the baby but he never really replied 
so I never really did anything after that and that was it um, so yeah I've just decided I'm gonna do all by myself and you know this whole idea of being a single mom is super scary but it's also empowering because I just think okay it's gonna be hard but also it would have been harder if I would have been in a relationship with a man who's toxic for my mental health and for my baby as well because it's not just about me now it's about another human being that needs to grow in a peaceful home in a loving home in a stable home and having me I am stable I'm gonna be there no matter what but as for him I cannot rely on him I cannot trust him at all I just you know it's so it's much better to just cut everything now and then you know um, I don't know if he's ever gonna come back but if he does God knows if he doesn't then God knows too <laughs> so you know we'll just continue as it is anyways sorry guys I've been talking a little bit too much but that's the story of me being single um, single mom um, by I don't know would you call that by choice uh, yeah you know I didn't really have any other options <laughs> um, but you know at the moment I have peace and I'm okay and I feel like I've made the right choice um, I don't want to be um, you know put, I don't I want to respect myself enough and I want to be able to offer my child a, a, a happy home even if that means to have just one uh, one um, parent who is stable um, oh the sun is out so pretty crazy who is hot and steamy in my back but I'm gonna finish now these I'm gonna do a little back workout with my resistance bands and with this tree um, and thank you for listening to me I hope you're all well I hope you're having a blessed Wednesday and um, I hope you I don't know how you're gonna find the content that I put here but this is what I felt like I should be sharing and this is what it was on my heart um, to tell you guys and honestly I'm not negative about it I'm not like depressed or anything like that I am um, okay I am actually much better than I was before when I had this man around me um, I am a lot more peaceful my mind is at peace my you know I just feel like I'm in the right place right now and that's what I need to be I need to keep peace um, so yeah uh, thank you for for listening to me oh the sun is getting really strong now but thank you for listening to me um, I hope you have a, a blessed Wednesday and sorry if I've been all over the place slowly slowly I'll get better with this and um, I will do a back workout and I'll try to record it and share it with you guys um, but yeah in the meantime stay cool because it's so hot here <laughs> um, and have a excuse me bless rest of the week Ooh, you know pregnancy pregnancy is not fun sometimes uh, but you take care be blessed bye